the pivot angle of refraction assignment. So for our learning objectives, we'll explore how a ray of light changes directions when it encounters a change in the medium through which it travels. Um, so we've learned a little bit about this before, but I just wanna show you the simulation um, that we're gonna be investigating. So for the refractive interactive, they have a laser and there's this medium. So it's traveling through air until it hits this um, type of plastic like looking thing. So if I just hit play, we can see that they put a little fog. So you can see the laser in air, and as it changes the angle, the light bends as it moves through the different mediums because light slows down when it changes in different mediums, when it travels through different mediums. So we'll set up a protractor to be able to make measurements of angles and whatnot to solve for that. So just to review, we learned this last week on Snell's Law, so I just wanted to review this again. But Snell's Law can be found in your reference table, which is N1 times sine theta uh, 1, which would be the index of, or not the index, the angle of incidence. N1 is the index of refraction of the medium it's in. So for this case, it would be a medium of air. And N equals N2 times sine theta 2, which would be the refracted light, which would be in the unknown material. So we can't look up an N value for that one because we don't know what the material is. And then we would take the sine of the angle of refraction. So this picture on the right shows air and water. So we'd measure from the normal, our angle of incidence and our angle of refract refraction here. Um, and in this case, they happen to know that this is water. So we could look up the index values of air and water in the reference table. But for our simulation, um, we can measure the angles on the simulation. So we will be able to measure the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction as seen here, right? We can measure our angle of incidence, we can measure our angle of refraction. So we can do that easily on the simulation. We can look up the index value of air in our reference table and just to let you know, that happens to be one for air. So this number here in our simulation is gonna be one and one times anything is just itself, the number itself. So we'll just be left with sine times the angle of incidence. And ultimately, we want to solve for the unknown n value of the unknown material in the simulation. So if I go to this next slide, what we're going to be doing, we can measure the angles. So we're going to make a chart and we're going to take the sine of that angle because this is the relationship of Snell's law. It has to do with the sine of that angle. Um, but it gets a little tricky. Usually we put our independent variable on the x-axis and our dependent variable on the y-axis. In this case, in the simulation, you see that the angle of incidence affects how it refracts in the medium. So we would call our angle of incidence the independent variable. But when we set up the graph, it's gonna look a little bit different. So in our graph, we want to solve for the n value or the index, absolute index of refraction of the unknown refracted material. We can manipulate this equation to solve for n2 because that's what we want to know. And so to do that, we divide by sine theta 2 on both sides and we get n1 times sine theta 1 divided by sine theta 2 equals n2, which would be the slope. So if we put the angle of incidence sine theta on the y-axis, um, when we find the slope, it's going to be the y-axis divided by the x-axis, which gives us n2. So that's why we set it up this way. So this means we put the angle of incidence on the y-axis so that the slope gives us n2. If you were to do it the opposite way, you could still get the n value, but you would need to do an additional step in the mathematics, and I think it's just easier to set it up like this. So obviously this is different from previous labs because we've kind of drilled it into you that independent variable goes on the x and dependent on the y. But for this case, to make the math work out, we're gonna do the opposite. The slope, so you'll get something that looks linear. The slope is gonna be that n2 value. Um, because slope is change in y over change in x. In this case, the change in y is this part here, sine theta. We already know n1 equals 1 because it's in air. And then sine theta 2 is the change in x that goes there. So that gives us that. So once we find the slope, um, we can use that to determine what the unknown material is. And depending on how accurate your data is, the more accurate you'll get for the slope the better you'll off you'll be to identify that unknown material. So in the pivot simulation, you're gonna set up your variables, set up your graph, make your graph, 
and then it asks you if you need to linearize it or not. If it's already a line, you do not need to linearize it, but you should write the linear equation that it has, so that y equals mx plus b, or I think in this th case they call it y equals ax plus b. But you'll write that equation, and then, um, then there's a whole section on making sense. So for those of you that might be struggling with the reference table, um, you're going to do your angle of incidence, because that is your dependent variable. The units are going to be in degrees. And then your dependent variable is the angle of refraction. So you would put that, and that's going to be measured in degrees. But again, remember from that equation, Snell's law, right? The sine n1 sine theta equals n2 sine theta 2. Or in this case, they call it i and r. For your pivot simulation, you're going to insert a column to the right, and you need to take the sine of it. So you're going to change the column formula. You're going to say sine of the angle of incidence, and boom, that's going to calculate that for you. So you can call this sine of angle of incidence. There's no units with that. Um, and then for the angle of refraction, you're also going to insert a column to the right and take the sine of that, again, because the equation calls for that. Oh, and then you would need to set up the column formula. So again, you would go sine, angle of refraction, close parentheses, and I spelled it wrong, so you might want to fix that in yours. And we're going to do 10 rows so we can get a really clear line of best fit. So you'll take your measurements. Um, it's up to you how you want to space them. If you're, we're doing 10, you might want to go, like I did originally every 15, but then that wasn't enough to give me 10 data points. So then I went back and did like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So on, on the ones that I don't know until I had 10 um, angle of incidences. So like if I start with 10, 15, 20, so on, however you want to do it. And then you'll measure the angle of refraction. So if I move the video to when it's at let's say 15, we can say that it's like 15, and then we can measure our angle here, and whatever that measurement is, is what we'll put in here. And then to set up your axes, we're gonna put incidence, sine of the angle of incidence on the y, and again, I talked about y earlier in the video, and then we're gonna put sine of angle of refraction here. Um, so once you take your data, you should get a line. You'll want to select the curve or line of best fit, and then you can answer the rest of the questions. So I hope this is enough to get you started on the pivot, and that's all I have.